welcome to my review of the new Model X30 from Emerald Guitars, a carbon fiber acoustic jumbo that is phenomenal. It, it makes no compromises. Usually you choose beauty or function. In this case, it maximizes all of it and has a few extra tricks to offer as well. So let's talk about why I like this guitar so much. Um, I'm going to break this into down into sound, function, and aesthetics. And so let's start with sound. I don't like guitar sound reviews on YouTube. Uh, I don't care how fancy a mic you have or how where it's positioned. When you're holding the guitar against your body with what you're wearing, the room you're in, with what's on the walls and how big the room is and what the floor is like and if it's new strings or old strings and the kinds of strings, that's going to change how a guitar is going to sound to you a lot. And on top of that, I don't know what you're listening to this on, it's usually going to be computer speakers or your phone or headphones. Unless it's a world-class audio system, then there's no chance of capturing the sound anyway. And so I just, I don't like them. But I know people do like them, so what I'm going to do for you is play this guitar next to my trusty Martin HD28E, which I thought would be the most sort of universally relatable guitar. So you can hear the difference between them, and that might be somewhat helpful in, in sort of showing you what they sound like. Now I'll give you my subjective impression, which is that I love the way this guitar sounds. I am going to pretty much sell everything else. The richness, the bass, the volume, the balance, the timbre. I think if you measured out what the frequencies are, it would come to life more than most guitars would. It sounds so great. And with the sound hole coming right up at you, you get more of the richness and bass and warmth. It's just, it's great. But here, let's do this comparison and then you guys can see what you think of the sound. So let's talk about the design of this guitar. This is a jumbo guitar. It's pretty big. If you look at it on the wall, it looks large. See it next to the thread knot. It's a pretty big boy. It's 17 inches across the boat. The bout. How do you say that? It's five inches deep. So you'd think that, and I was intimidated by it. Now I'm six foot three, so I thought it'd probably be okay, but I've never played a regular acoustic jumbo, and a lot of people say that it's uncomfortable on their arm. Watch this. So well, let me just make the point. See where my elbow and shoulder are? Look at the angle here, from shoulder to elbow, okay?
my elbow's higher. Like I can feel it. It's less comfortable. I don't have I don't have any shoulder problems, but I still don't like that as much. You know, if you sleep with your arm above your shoulder, it cuts off the nerves and blood supply in there, and this is less comfortable. How is it possible that a smaller body guitar gets my elbow up higher? Well, carbon fiber is the short answer. But let's look at a standard dreadnought. So this guitar cuts straight across the bottom, because that's how they make them, and all the angles are sharp or along the edge. So when you tip it toward yourself and angle it a little bit, the guitar is actually sitting on a sharp edge in the back of your leg. And you become really aware of this when you play one that's better. We'll talk about it in a second. There's also a sharp edge here, which pokes, a bit, my, pokes against my ribs, and then there's a sharp edge here. So all of those take up a lot of space. They take up so much space, in fact, that a much larger guitar, sculpted properly, fits even better. So let's start with the upper arm. Obviously, even a small bezel on a regular acoustic is much more comfortable. This is a pretty generous one, so okay, my arm's down a little bit there. So that's clearly not the whole story. He did a nice generous sculpting for the rib area here, and that's nice too. So instead of having, when you pull it into your body, especially with the weight of two arms, it's comfortable. You don't even feel it, whereas on a normal guitar you do. But the bottom is where the real genius came in. So instead of cutting straight across, you cut it this way. And furthermore, instead of cutting it at directly across the body, they cut it that way. See how that's not straight across? Well, it makes sense, because no one plays a guitar like this. You angle it this way, and you angle it this way. So they just accommodate it to that. And so you end up actually with a jumbo with a deeper body, five inches. It's even more comfortable, because now you're distributing the weight of the guitar and your arms across a greater space on your leg, and none of it's being focused onto a ridge. So it's really comfortable. How is it? Who wouldn't want a jumbo, the, the sound quality of a jumbo guitar in something that fits so well? I think this is an amazing, amazing instrument. I'm going to get to the sound hole in a second. Let's talk about the neck first. It's technically a 12 fret guitar, the body ends at the 12th fret. But you can really access these higher frets. I'll talk about this contour in a second too. Because they've cut away, usually the body comes down from the side of the neck, but here it's actually cut away all the way back. So you can get your heel all the way up to access those higher frets. Now I'm not a higher fret player, and I found the sharp bottom of the fretboard to be contrasting against the sensuous lines of this guitar. So I asked Alistair to do a swirl for me, but not just any swirl. I spent hours drawing, just flipping it different width, which way it comes in, how much it dips down, and all this stuff. And he was very patient through all of that, and finally he got this perfect for me. So I have my little swirl. So I knocked out a couple frets is the point. I have 20 frets now, um, instead of the regular 22. I think those numbers are right, but anyway. Um, so two points in there. One, the fretboard is awesome. If you do like the higher frets, two, uh, Ammo Guitars is awesome, in which they'll customize anything for you if you want it. Fantastic company. Um, the neck is great. Carbon fiber, if you don't know, it won't warp, it won't twist, it won't crack. Um, I've left carbon fiber guitars in trunks and over 100 degree temperatures for multiple days and they've been fine. Granted, I have a white car, but still haven't done it with this guitar, but I've done it with others. Um, but you'll never have to do a neck reset or fix your frets or anything. You're never going to have cracks or warps, nothing. The humidity won't affect it. The temperature, to a degree, won't, won't affect it. Um, they're much sturdier guitars than wood guitars. You don't have to worry about humidifying them or where it has in the room or has the any of that. So that's great. The neck was set up really nicely. I have a blue one, too. Now, that one, the action was a little low. And so I went in with the um, included fret uh, truss rod wrench. I went counterclockwise about a half turn, and I think that means it's a double action truss rod because it, it gave the neck a little bit of bend, I think. I'm not a pro on this stuff, but it worked in any case. It was a quick fix. This one came up set up just perfectly. Um, the neck contour is great. I forget what they call it, but I like it a lot. Um, I am a little more tolerant on neck shape than some, but they will make whatever neck shape you want. Pretty cool. So if you have a specific one, that's great. Um, so those are the main, I got a pinless bridge because I think it gives you more control over muting because you can just touch that saddle versus having to jump over the pins and get all the way onto the strings. Um, I like that muting color and they did a very nice pinless bridge. So another customization on my part. Um, I like the way they did the headstock. You know, I, I always liked flared headstocks, but it often means that the strings kind of overlap each other in contact as they go past the, the pegs here. And having one where the strings are all separated is really the classier way to do it. Um, the only thing that was a little tricky for me is that I like to use uh, a plug for G7 capos. They're awesome. Two finger use. You can drop it right up here. Never have to even use your third finger. Um, having the extra real estate on the headstock was kind of nice. 
because you want it to come in at this angle because it's awkward to come at it from that side and you can do it on the cross of the headstock but getting over there is difficult so but the solution has just been to clip it on the, the tip and it works great it holds very well it's steady it's not like it's always falling off so that was my only one little question but we got around that um, beautiful tuners Grover 510s um, what else about the function uh, I had them put a uh, Luma Glow, I forget what they're called, but they're glowing fret markers. Probably unnecessary, but it's a nice touch. Uh, and he did a beautiful job with that. And so let's talk about the sound hole. It has a lot of unexpected benefits. So one, it looks cool. Two, uh, if you put your ear in front of a standard uh, guitar, uh, a lot of the bass comes out when you play it directly through the sound hole. And so having the sound hole up here, that still projects forward, but it also projects up at you. And you get to enjoy a lot of the richness and warmth that comes out of this jumbo guitar. And that's just nice, because a lot of the time you spend with your guitar is just you unplugged playing. And it, it really emphasize, it, you know, it, it creates for me an uh, acoustic experience from this that just really is a level above what I get from regular guitars. Um, so they did a great job with that. Another thing is, anytime you have a, a vibrating surface, like a drum head or a, a soundboard like this, the center is going to move the most, or whichever part moves the most, moves the most air and creates the most loudness, right? And in this case, it's going to be the center. And so putting a big hole in the middle of that loses you a lot of real estate that can move air and create loudness. Um, now, this is a very loud guitar. I don't know if it's exactly because of that or what other design elements, but I think that contributes. So that's the second nice feature as far as the sound goes, as far as the sound hole goes. My favorite thing about the sound hole, the way it's positioned, is that I have stuck a little tuner, a D'Addario clip-on headstock tuner, right here. I sawed off the little peg with a coping saw, and I used some dual lock um, to stick it to the inside. You can use Gorilla Tape if you want. Dual, dual lock works just fine as far as sound pickup, and then you can change the battery more easily. But anyway, let me show you. It's right there. It's the most perfect place you could possibly put a guitar tuner. Um, I, headstock tuners are, you know, they're okay, but they're always getting caught on stuff and falling off and uh, they're just hard to keep track of. It's really easy to drop them. Um, this Martin has a great tuner. It's built into the side, the F1 Aura system. But, you know, you hit it, you have to hold it for a second. It shows you the F1, you wait, and then you can, always, you can hit the wrong button and change things. Uh, it's a pretty good tuner, but this is even better because it's a dedicated thing. It's out of view. It doesn't catch on anything. Uh, it's perfect. Like honestly, it's my dream. I, I really care about having an onboard guitar tuner because you know, I hate the clip-ons and you can't always use your phone. So this is just, it's just the best thing ever. You can tell I'm excited about it. I really am. Um, I think they will make, they will install one for you if you want, but you can just do your own. The other thing I did is I got a little cheap uh, pick holder and I stuck it to the inside. And maybe you can see that. Maybe you find it unsightly. But um, I think it's a fine compromise, and it's another thing, I don't have to have one stuck to the back of the neck of the headstock somewhere, which can make it ugly, and can interfere with the, you know, hooking on things and in the case, and so on. So, how great to be able to just do it right there. I love it. Well, not to mention battery changes. Of course, you can get in there and change the battery easily. You don't have to loosen the strings like you would on a traditional guitar. So, it's a great design. All right, the aesthetics of the guitar. So the most obvious thing, obviously, is this big piece of wood veneer. So we'll get to that next. Let me first talk about the carbon fiber weave itself. Um, in photos, in their stock photos, it looks really bright. You can see it very well. In people's photos they take in their homes, these guitars often look kind of black. It's hard to tell what color they are. The fact is that carbon fiber is black, and so you're adding color on top of it. It's really tricky to make it bright. Um, I have a blue X30 also, and that one looks a little dark. It looks black a lot, and the blue is more subtle, but this red is really beautiful. And it's more like a gemstone, like a, like a faceted, like a ruby, where there's sparkles as you move it, or like an opal or a labradorite or something that just changes as you look at it. And there are so many different surfaces in the weave of the carbon fiber that as the light hits you, you get this amazing gemstone-y sparkle, especially the little teeny fiber ends and so on. It's beautiful. Um, and you know, in the photos, when I saw the, uh, the back and sides, I thought, I used to think it looked a little boring. It's just straight carbon fiber, but in person, it's magical. It's so gorgeous. You gotta see it in motion to really appreciate what the carbon fiber looks like. Especially the fretboard here, it's black, the strip of black, and then the red behind it. When you're playing, it's just beautiful. 
So that's cool. And then I like the way that it flows into the veneer. Um, they've made these transitions with the black shadowing, just perfect, so gorgeous. Which brings us to the veneer. So, um, when I first saw these guitars and saw the veneers, I thought, what are you doing putting wood on a carbon fiber guitar? It doesn't make sense. It's carbon fiber. It's, it isn't, you know, when you have an exotic wood guitar, that's wood. So if it's a beautiful wood, it's just a beautiful wood. Well, really though, most guitars don't need to be made of anything exotic. Uh, and all these exotic grain patterns are just for decoration, right? So if you're using exotic wood to decorate a wood guitar, is there really anything wrong with using exotic wood to decorate a carbon fiber guitar? I don't know. Um, it, uh, it allows you to use the most exotic pieces of wood, which would probably be inappropriate for uh, guitar building. And it also preserves it forever, because this is fused under some resin now, so it's never going to crack on you or go dull, or even get a spill on it and get stained. And you don't have to worry about humidifying it or any of that. So you get to enjoy the most beautiful works of Mother Nature preserved forever on your guitar. Pretty cool. The other thing it does is otherwise these guitars are all the same. So now this guitar is only mine. There's no other one just like it. Whether you like that or not, it's up to you, but it's kind of cool. So the veneer is gorgeous. When the full light hits it, of course, you get all the colors of it, but even in mixed lighting, it's just the light, the way the light plays across the, the wood grain, kind of like koa, the way it kind of moves and shimmers. It's just beautiful. Um, and it's natural, you know, so you can get lost in it. Every little, every, every tiny dot is different, individual, because it grew from something real. So you feel kind of connected to nature again, even if it's only a, a micron thick or however it works. Anyway, I love it. I think it's so beautiful. Um, so, and then what else as far as aesthetics? They, um, using a black nut and saddle is really classy. Like, that seems obvious, but I have another carbon fiber guitar where they went white there. It doesn't look good. You know, the white just looks off-white and I don't know. Um, oh, of course they put wood on the headstock too. And what else as far as aesthetics? Just, you know, the saddle design. It's just, it's a beautiful all-around guitar. And the fact that it's so functional and beautiful, it's just, it's just cool. I got this, um, this is Walker and Williams. Uh, I just thought this <clears throat> stripe was cool because the colors kind of go. And this is a pretty good deal on Amazon. I think it was 30 bucks. It's a nice strap. So... I think that about wraps it up. Um, my goal with this video was to sh make a video that if I went looking for a review, would let me look in, around, really see what the guitar was like, hear about it, get all the details, see what it was like to own this guitar. And so I've hoped to show you a lot of video and it'll give you a lot of subjective impressions that will give you as much of the experience of owning this as you can get. Um, and then honestly, go get one. They're expensive, but you never have to worry about it. You get tons of sound and a comfortable guitar. They're just fabulous. So, thank you for watching. Any questions, comments, go ahead and throw them in the bottom there, and um, I'll be happy to answer what I can. Thanks again.